configuration revisions, backups, and restores. Okay everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how to manage the Palo Alto configs. We want to make sure that we have a rollback in case we made a change that disruptive or actually broke some communication on your network. We want to roll back. We need to know the process to do that in the Palo Alto firewall. We're also going to take a look at auditing. So you want to make some changes and you want to know what's the difference between what's running, what is the intention or what will be changed once we commit the changes. We have two types of configs. We have the running config and we have the candidate config. The running config is the one that is active in production. So that's the active firewall config. This is what is currently running on the environment. And the candidate config is what whichever change you made onto the running config but has not been applied yet. This is all the all the changes that you do on the Palo Alto, they're not live changes. You need to commit them in order for them to become running. So a candidate configuration is a pre commit config. It's the configuration that you made the adjustments on the GUI, but you haven't committed. You haven't made it a running config. Once you execute the running commit, it will become the running config. So you want to make sure the difference between those two. Auditing on the actual commit window, we have the option to review what's going to be changed. Or for example, if someone logged in onto the Palo Alto, perform a change but did not commit it, and you see that you have some pending changes to be committed, you want to make sure that before you make any additional change, you checked what was modified and that will definitely save you a trouble or a, an issue. If, if for some reason someone decided to eliminate something, but they turned back, they didn't go according, didn't want to actually execute that change, but they did not uncommit it or, you know, or revert the changes. If you apply or commit, you're actually applying whatever someone else left behind that they did not commit. So you want to make sure that you understand how to do an audit before you go ahead and implement any future changes. And then obviously the backups, that should be mandatory. You're performing the full backups or you can also save local config snapshots. So there's ways to save snapshots. You can save a name snapshot, meaning that you can put a name and it's going to be a custom labeled snapshot or config file, or you can just save the running snapshot or the current config as a snapshot. Every time that you commit, it will add a snapshot to the config database. So we're going to take a look at that. And also we're going to take a look at restoring a backup. So you have a backup file or you have a snapshot that you want to revert back to in case you did something and you did an oops. Everyone does that. You want to make sure that you can restore. We're going to do that procedure on this demonstration. And also we're going to revert. So the difference between restore and revert is that we're restoring a file from a known saved config. So either you exported a name snapshot or you have a local snapshot on the firewall. You can restore to that image. Revert means that whatever I did on the Palo Alto that became the candidate config that we're just pending for it to be committed, we decided we no longer want to go with that change. We can revert that and the Palo Alto will not have anything pending to be committed and you save a future issue. If someone decides to log in and perform a com another commit and they didn't realize there was something pending, they can break stuff and we have no idea what, was, what happened because someone else decided not to revert whatever they were intending to config. So this is also very important. So, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, review all this. And uh, after this, you should have a very, very detailed idea of how do you manage the configs on your Palo Alto firewall. Okay, so once we log in, we're going to go into device and we're going to go on to setup and operations. And this is where we have the configuration management section on our Palo Alto firewall. We have the revert, which we can revert to either a safe config or we can revert to the previous running config. And I'm going to show you the difference between those two. So say, for example, we went onto policies and uh, oh, let's take this example. So we have some net rules and we decided we no longer need this one. We go ahead and click delete. What we just did is we just modified the running config and we created a candidate config. Right now, the running config has the net rule number four. So the rule that I just deleted, the running config still has it because this is not live. 
but the candidate config does not. So let's take a look at the commit session and we should be able to see what is the difference between the running config and the candidate config. We'll click on preview change and it's asking us how many lines of config do you want to present on the screen? And in this case, because I just deleted one line, I should not need to you know, put 20 lines. So I'm just gonna leave it at 10. And so what you can see here is what we were discussing. We have the running config, which is the active config. And the candidate config is the configuration that once we hit commit, it will modify the session that you see here colored or highlighted. If we can see right here, we have a legend. So anything that will be added in case I will add a new object, I will see this in green. So it will show highlighted in green on the candidate config because we're adding it to the running config. This is already on the running config and because we're deleting it on the candidate config, you're not gonna see anything once we hit commit. So we're removing all this information from the running config. Modify if something did not actually got deleted or added, we're just making changes. For example, we modify the IP address on the same object which is this destination not rule, you're gonna see a modify. You're gonna see from this address label or highlighted in yellow to the new configuration and the candidate side. Because we just deleted that destination not not long ago, we see before running config, destination NAT, and then after candidate config, we don't have anything. So you are going to see what you're going to actually impact. So you gotta make sure that you take a look at this before you apply a commit that you don't know why it was pending. So you can tell that it was pending because this actually got enabled. So if there's no pending changes to be committed, you're gonna see this grayed out and you cannot click it. Once there's a pending commit change, you're gonna see this enabled. So you wanna make sure that you do a preview change and confirm that you have, that you're sure that you want to apply those changes. Change summary, it basically tells you what has been changed, what will be modified on the actual change once you commit. And it shows you the difference between candidate and running. And finally, validate commit, what it's gonna say is going to check if it's valid. If there's an error, it's gonna tell you, I am not able to do because of this particular issue. So you gotta basically fix everything that is telling you to fix before you can commit the change. And it's actually telling us that the configuration is valid because there's nothing weird on the config that you need to modify. And then finally, you know, the commit. Okay, so what we wanna do before we commit, because we, we just removed that object, I'm going to do a configuration backup. We first, we wanna save the name config snapshot. The difference between save name config snapshot and save candidate is that this will be exported or be stored in a name file. So you're going to create a custom file and download it and then you can export that one. If you want to save the candidate config, it will not create a custom file. It will just save on the candidate config file, which is the default section on the PA that stores that data. Let's go ahead and do a config snapshot and we're gonna label this destination removal so we are making a configuration backup before we actually apply the new changes so let me go ahead and pre net removal we can add the date and it has been saved so we're gonna export that config and in order for you to export what we just saved onto your local machine you're gonna click export name configuration snapshot and we'll select it here and this is our guy this is the one that we want to export we just did a save name configuration snapshot Press OK, and now it's asking us to download it to our local machine. Now we're gonna save the candidate config, okay? And then we're just gonna have a snapshot, which is, this is the default location of the candidate config. If we want to export that, we can also export it. How we do it, we'll just go into export name configuration snapshot, and we'll just select the running config and this will basically have that, you know, the latest running config before we apply the changes. Let's go ahead and apply the changes. We're gonna press commit. Also, you can see here, so in case you have multiple admins, the configuration changes are actually attached to the particular admin account that actually performed the changes. So you might not, if you're using a custom login or your own username and password, you're not gonna have the same commits that any other user might have. 
So that is something to prevent someone from applying a config that we're not intending to apply. So we just apply the config and now we have the running config without the for nat rule that we just removed. And we want to go ahead and revert the changes that we did. One way of doing it, it's either applying the config snapshot of the pre change that we just did or we import the name config. So let's go ahead and first import the name file that we just downloaded from the Palo Alto and then we'll delete it and we'll do a config import, uh, a config snapshot import so you can see the difference. Okay, so we go into import. In this case, we want to uh, look for the file that we just backed up. Uh, we label a file with the date and uh, the changes that we did. So let's go ahead and uh, import that file. We'll click here and then you can click browse, point the Palo Alto to the file that you just backed up with the export. So let's go ahead and click browse. And we have our file. Our file is the pre dnat removal and we're just going to double click and we're going to import it. Now we're actually applying the backup file that we just exported with our own name. Okay, we have it at saved and we now want to load the file that we just imported. So let's go ahead and load a name configuration snapshot. And this is our file right here and we'll press OK. And now we have the config being loaded. So let's take a look. So we know that it's been applied and uh, we should be good. Now we have that rule back in place by downloading and applying the last save config before we committed the changes. Okay, so now I'm going to do it again, but this time I am going to save a snapshot. We're going to delete and then we're going to revert using the snapshot that we just saved. So we're going to go ahead and device. We want to save the candidate config. And let's go ahead and uh, do a new file. Okay, so now we have it. Let's go ahead back onto policies and we're just going to delete another one. Let's delete this one. Okay, let me go ahead and commit. Okay, has completed. Now that we don't have that rule, we just deleted it. We realize that we need to roll back. Very simple. Let's go back onto the device and we're going to load the name config snapshot that we just saved not long ago. And this case will be removal to snapshot. We'll press OK. And now it's telling me that it's being loaded. So let me take a look here. Okay, so it has been loaded. Let's wait just a minute and uh, take a look again. And if you see here, our log tells us that we just deleted that rule, but we applied the snapshot, so we should have the rule back. Let's go out into policies. And sure enough, we have it already. So that is how you make sure that if you need to roll back, you have a process in place and you understand how to work with configurations on your Palo Alto firewall. Okay, everyone, in our next video, we're going to take a look at console-based firewall recovery. Thank you for watching.